praise God. Well, good morning. Good to see you who are here today. What about those who aren't, huh? Good to see you. And for those who are joining us by our media ministries, good to have you with us today as well. We have had a very great week of missions. Uh, we've done it different this year than we've ever done it before. And um, uh, from the beginning of the um, conference last week with the Callahans to the distributing of Bibles to the junior high to the Skype conferences that we've had. I mean, it's just been one of the, I think, one of the best weeks we've had as it relates to missions. And maybe that's simply because of the fact that it's been different. But uh, nevertheless, it's good to see uh, you today. And uh, we know that uh, a lot of people probably are home. In fact, there are some places across our state, our city, and our country where churches are closed today. Uh, but we're here, and uh, we're going to enjoy our time together with the Lord. Uh, we are delighted to have the Gravelys back with us. Uh, they are not old to us. They're, I mean, they're not new to us. They're old to us. And uh, just like the rest of us, they're getting older. But uh, it's a delight to have them with us, and uh, we started supporting them when they were in Romania, and now, of course, they're in administration out of Baptist Mid Mission, and uh, I predict that one of these days we'll be looking at Travis and saying he's the president of BMN, don't, don't you think? I mean, I think that you're on that track, aren't you? You didn't mean to be. Well, that's usually how it happens, and uh, we will... We'll call the mission and let them know that you're on that track. But uh, Travis, won't you come up and sit with us and let's welcome the Gravelys back with us today. And uh, how long has it been we've been supporting you folks? I don't know. I'd have to look in there. That's a good question. I think it's been since uh, the, the missions conference we came here in, in uh, 09 or, or something like that. Yeah. You may have been. We were talking about this earlier this week. You may have been one of that group, there was one missions conference we had where the missionary guests that we had with us <clears throat> so impressed the church that we usually had like uh, seven missionary couples come. And, but it so impressed the church that we had people come to us and say, let's support. And um, yeah. five out of the seven mm. were taken on support. <laughs> Yeah. The other two weren't because we already supported them. Yeah. <laughs> and and oh, so it's just amazing to see uh, how that. So you may have been a part of that group. I do not know. 
but uh, if, if, if it's 209, that means 11 years. And uh, we remember how you worked with the Roma people yes. over in Romania and right. some of the things that you did. Yeah. But now your ministry has expanded quite a bit. Why don't you just share with our group what it is that you do right sure. now? Sure. Uh, we are involved in, in the part of Baptist Mid Missions that's called Church Relations and Enlistment. So, uh, so we, that covers a lot. Uh, the, the primary focus is enlistment, really, mm. and facilitating and uh, trying to recruit. Uh, we can use that word. I think we all understand it in the context of, of ministry. Uh, missionaries and uh, short-term, long-term missionaries and just doing all that we can to stir hearts for missions as well as uh, to make it easier for people to join a mission agency and to get to the field. Mm -hmm. so. so does that mean you travel a lot? It does uh, re require a good bit of travel, uh, especially to, uh, to Bible college campuses and conferences and sometimes, oftentimes churches uh, for missions conferences and that mm -hmm. type of thing. One of the things that I've heard uh, from people in your capacity is that um, they have shifted more from going to Bible colleges mm -hmm. to going to uh, churches for mm -hmm. recruitment. Right. Is that something that you have done, or is it still a balance there, or yeah. what do you find? Where it's do most of your recruits from come from, the church or the college? Well, that's sort of a trick question. Uh, they, they all come from the church. That's the right answer, for sure. Uh, we, are, we are about helping churches send their missionaries. Um, but I would say a lot of times still uh, our, our main contact with people comes through some sort of connect on a campus or, or in some other uh, place where they have touched, maybe done a short term trip with us or maybe their church is just really involved with some of supporting some of our missionaries and so they've kind of been linked up that way. Uh, we do also see the great need for us to be back in churches regularly, um, appealing to the people in the pew uh, to look to the harvest field because uh, our Bible colleges are shrinking uh, and closing many of them. And, uh, and so the, the, there's a bit of a pendulum swing that we're still trying to figure out. But uh, yeah, we want to we wanna be faithful to be in the church, uh, but also serving and, and finding those people that we can work with on, on Bible college campuses. There are still many uh, wonderful young people that desire to do what God wants them to do, and we're enjoying those, those meetings too. Of your travel to colleges, uh, which would you say are the greatest missions-minded colleges today in really training people for ministry? You know, when I was younger and uh, went into ministry, a lot of the Bible colleges had the thrust on training people to, to preach, whether mm -hmm. it's in the pastorate or mm -hmm. in the mission mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. It seems like in the last years there's been a diversification. Right. Uh, many colleges have expanded their curriculum and so forth. Right. Uh, but as you look at it, are there? And I'm sure that everyone you go to is good. But but which would be if you if there are two schools that come to your mind that are really mission-minded schools that BMM can't wait to get into? <laughs> which two schools are they? Boy, that's uh. Not a trick uh, question. Yeah, I'm trying to think of balance politics and no, 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 don't, no, 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 don't be political. No, be, no, I know, uh, I know better than to say that uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just tell the truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what I mean is, like you said, we, we find all of them to have wonderful, wonderful students and and great faculty and great great emphasis. I, I would say that, that two that kind of rise to the surface when it comes to really laser focused on, on ministry and missions um, would be Appalachian Bible College in, in Beckley, West Virginia. Mm. Uh, still remains a very small school, but at, with a great heart and just a great emphasis. Uh, and then um, one that, that BMM has, has always been close with uh, and has, uh, we have a, a lot of, probably the school where we have the most MKs uh, in, enrolled would be Faith Baptist Bible College in Ankeny, Iowa. Hmm. Uh, and they remain very, very focused on ministry and, and missions, so we're thankful for that. Hmm. I've heard a lot of that school. I've never been there. I've met some people hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. And it just seems that that's what we continue to hear. Yes, sir. Uh, and trying to remember the name of the past president there that uh, I've had some connections with recently. Uh, 
boy, don't get old, you forget things. Uh, <laughs> he lives in Florida now and he yeah. writes books. Uh, okay. uh, but that doesn't, that's, that's that, right. that, that doesn't relate <laughs> to where we are today, but thank the Lord. Well, last week when we had Kevin Callahan here out of 15 questions, we covered three. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to ask the same three questions that I asked him last week. But um, um, you got these, of course, in advance, so you've memorized your answers. And that's why I asked you three questions already that aren't on here. Yeah, that's true. I noticed that. <laughs> but, yeah, you noticed that. Um, I do want to start with this because Kevin dealt with this last week, so I will okay. overlap a little bit. Give a biblical description of missions and a missionary. Yeah. Uh, talked about this with the young people last night, actually, uh, a bit. And uh, I, I would say, uh, try to be concise, um, I would say the, the core of, of the activity of biblical missions would be making disciples. Uh, that's what Jesus says, you know, go and teach all nations, uh, making disciples of all nations. And so our focus has to be on, uh, on the spread of the gospel and its taking root uh, in the form of churches growing out of that effort uh, and those churches growing to maturity following the commands of Christ and, and the model of, of Scripture and New Testament church model. Uh, and so th th that would be the core and the essence. Uh, biblical missions is the sending out of the church's people that are qualified uh, and that are, are uh, you know, burdened by the Lord and called by the Lord to reach uh, people that don't have the gospel across the world and, and making disciples in that place and seeing the church built and, and seeing the church matured into the many aspects that even we see on display here of the various ministries that you're involved in and reaching the community and doing good and, and uh, evangelistic efforts and so forth. So that's all involved, but at the core of it being, being that, sending out people to do that work. How important is missions to the individual Christian? as well as the, the local church. In yeah. fact, what place should missions play in the local church program? I, years ago, I mean, this is, year, this is over, well, maybe 35 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, uh, I had a, a pastor of a good church, uh, IFCA church, uh, who said, I'm up to here hmm. with missions and missionaries. And that was a church that had a strong missions program. Um, I do not know where he's gone since then, um, but well, I know where he is. He's with the Lord, uh, but and he stayed at that church for years. I don't know where the church has gone since then, but um, a lot of times today, particularly when we're living in a time when there seems to be financial issues in a lot of churches, uh, when it costs money for, a lot of money, for young people to go off to Bible college to train for missions, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes the missions program is just sort of tacked on yeah. to the end mm -hmm. of the budget, tacked on to the end of what the church does. Uh, so from the biblical perspective, what is the place of missions in the heart and the mind of the local, the, mm -hmm. the average, the individual Christian as well as the local church? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it really is, it needs to be primary. And, and the reason I say that, and we, again, we talked about this a little bit last night, I think that, that, uh, that every Christian needs to come to terms with, with Christ's parting words to his people uh, as he was ascending into heaven, is that is, you know, there's a mission to, to be about. There is an effort of making disciples and being a, a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. So, the individual Christian needs to, to not be looking at Christianity as simply uh, programs at church, a WANA program or whatever program at church, and, and you know this fellowship and this potluck here and, and being in church, but, but it, being in church is, is essential, but it's about you know, growing in Christ and making disciples of those in our family as well as, as people around us and all working together toward that, that end. And, and then global missions is just an outworking of a church, a body of people that are focused on living and living out the gospel and speaking the gospel and making that primary in, in making sure they're a part of, of a global effort to do that. Um, and so I just, 
it, it sounds simple, but I, I just have come back often to the appeal that, that we have as a mission agency, and I think that, that the scriptures model is you ought to be praying, you ought to be giving, you ought to be going and sending. I would add in, you know, pray, give, go, and send. Um, and, and I think that we need to be a part of, of that, that fourfold appeal of missions in some way or another. A couple of those parts we can do more than the others. Not every one of us is going to be actually packing up our bags and going. But we ought to be, we have to be praying, we have to be giving, we have to be sending if we're not going. Mm. Uh, and even if you're going, be a part of the praying, giving, and, going, uh, and sending as well. So mm. it, we all ought to be involved in those ways. We, uh, as we speak, we have one fellow, uh, part of our congregation, out on the mission field. Uh, a couple of us were to go tomorrow uh, mm. to India, but we were told we shouldn't go from the people on that side. So we have, um, um, we have, um, uh, we're going to reschedule it. Yesterday, one of our men was going to go down to Ecuador. You probably know that to be with Carlene Piper oh. and, and uh, a team, and that was brought to a halt. Mm. Uh, we do know, you know, uh, Pastor Barry Yingling right. out of our church. He is taking a group, and he's in Dominican Republic right now. Uh, later on, there's about 10 from our church going to go to Dominican Republic. Uh, so I'm talking about short-term missions. Uh, what do you see as the value of short-term missions to the local church as well as to the individual, as well as to the missionary. Do yeah. missionaries like people to come for two weeks or a month? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. That's a good answer, too. <laughs> if it's carefully, uh, you can see I'm, I'm very diplomatic here. Very political. Be, He's just be. very political. <laughs> what uh, are you I running say, for? What are you running for? No, no, not, nothing. But uh, I, I appreciate the question. I think it's really important that we ask that question and that we think it through carefully. Uh, the value of short-term missions to, to the Christian as well as the church and the missionary. Um, I think it is valuable, and, and yet it has, to be, it has to be done carefully and for the right reasons. Um, I would say the, one of the primary values of it for, for the person in the pew as well as for the church would be that you get to know the missionary and you get to know what, what their, their work and what they're doing. Um, because that way you can have a relationship of partnering or sending or both uh, that is very meaningful and that you understand and you're praying and you, your, your heart is, is in that effort and, and you, 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 you give more of your being to it. So being there, seeing it, especially a, a select group of people um, you know, from the church that, that will, will really be able to, to come back and share that, that vision with others. Um, I think missionaries do enjoy having a visit from home. And, and they love the opportunity to sit down with people that understand them and that they can share fellowship with. So another primary motivation, I think, for short-term missions is to go and be an encouragement to, mm -hmm. to those missionaries. And mm -hmm. we've had people come when we were in Romania simply to, to uh, paint rooms in our house and help us chop our wood and, and uh, just to do stuff for us in our house that, that was a little bit more challenging over in Romania than it would have been here or, or maybe that we just didn't have a lot of time to do. Uh, so I don't know if they called that a mission trip. They probably did call it a mission mm -hmm. trip, but they weren't actually making disciples in the streets of Romania. They were, they were helping us to do that and uh, by helping us with simple life stuff. So uh, I think that we just need to be careful um, how we talk about it. I, to be honest, I, I don't know if there's a lot of value of sending 20 or 30 people over to, to, to sort of swamp a, a place and, and just kind of have this experience um, and, and oftentimes, you know, in Bible college campuses, uh, every single person I talk to has been, maybe they're only 20 years old, but they've been four times, you know, across the ocean. Uh, and that's wonderful for their understanding of the world and, and the fact that Americans aren't the only people in the world. Uh, but it, I think oftentimes we just are too hasty to say, oh, yeah, mission trip, that's just part of what we do. And, and we haven't really thought through why we're doing it, is, it is, is what we're doing actually contributing to the work or harming the work. Uh, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot to say there, but those are some thoughts. And like you say, it, it, there can be a distinction there. I mean, you know, you, you say a mission trip could be to go out and help with a particular ministry, that missionary, whatever it would be for that time. 
uh, or it could go be going to do work, right. work trip, right. painting, chopping right. wood, mm -hmm. uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so there's a distinction there too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, but it, but it, it, it's uh, maybe it should be referred to as a mission aid trip or something there like that. There you go. <laughs> maybe. But, uh, but that's 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 a good. I appreciate you making that distinction. Years ago, um, Woodrow Kroll wrote a book entitled The, I think it was A Dying Ministry. You familiar with it? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that particular book, and it, it's a long time ago now, mm -hmm. and since he wrote that book, several years after he wrote it, I was able to talk with him, and he said trends are changing and so forth. But, but in that book, and other books that have been written, it was emphasized that at one time, the United States of America per capita sent more people in the missions than any other nation in the world. Right. When Woodrow Crowe wrote that book, we were number 16. Mm. We had gone from number one down to right. number 16. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're not, and I don't know where that would be today. Um, I have no idea where that would be today. Also, in that particular book and other books I have had the opportunity of reading, um, there was a trend where not as many young people out of college uh, were going into missions, but people who were in mid-age, mm -hmm. in their 30s and 40s, were going into missions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just wondering what we are seeing today. Yeah. Uh, you may not know, but per capita, mm. uh, are, are we are we still sending a lot of missionaries into the world uh, as we used to? Uh, you may not know that answer, but what about the trend in the age of people going into missions? Yeah. What have you found at BMM? I have, I have a statistic somewhere, and I have it as a part of a, of a talk I do, but I just can't remember right now. But I know that we are certainly not in the top five of sending nations uh, when it comes to sending missionaries. We're, we're down. Uh, quite a bit, and I don't remember if it's in the 16 range or something like that, but that, that trend continues. And uh, a lot of that has to do with the, uh, the fact that churches in what they call the global south, so southern hemisphere of the, of the globe, those countries where Christianity has, uh, has caught some momentum in, in Southeast Asia, Korea, or, or in uh, South Korea, or in uh, in South America, churches are sending more missionaries than we are sending missionaries. So there's positive there that we see sure. other, other peoples doing missions, but the negative is that we're not doing as much as we used to do. Uh, and so that is certainly a concern. We at BMM have seen a consistent decline of new missionaries over the last 10 years uh, joining our ranks. Uh, and uh, the last three or, or four years, which this is a, a key part of what I do, is leading the the candidate seminar, the new missionary uh, orientation, we've had about 12 to 12, uh, probably an average, about 12 new, new missionaries per year. Uh, and that's significantly lower than it used to be. Um, and, and I would say what we see are the average age being, uh, we have some older, some younger, but I would say 28 or so is probably about the average age of the new missionary coming in. Uh, which is encouraging to me. That's not too old, um, but I love love seeing the the people that are. You know, ten years ago when I got out of Bible college, I, I knew I should have been a missionary, but it's taken me ten years to kind of come to terms with that. I love working with those kind of people too because they come with experience, they come with life experience, they come with some some tread under them, so they they have a, a bit of an advantage in a, in a way uh, to to start the missionary process. But uh, the younger ones do have different advantages. But anyway, that's what we're seeing and. Uh, I, I'm both encouraged with the people I work with and what I'm seeing, people obeying the Lord Jesus, but I'm, I'm discouraged in the fact that, uh, one, the churches that I'm ministering in, ministering in are fewer in number. The churches are shrinking, and that means that the fewer people are stepping up to, hmm. to give their life to missions, uh, hmm. at least in the world I, I run in. So. What about uh, retirees? Hmm. You know, I know that I don't remember what mission board it was a number of years ago, it might have been Baptist Mid, I don't know which, but uh, there was a particular mission to put out a thrust to retirees saying, you know, mm -hmm. you're in good health, you, you don't have to raise your support, you're on retirement income, whatever the case, mm -hmm. you can afford to go, yeah. uh, 
What about that? Are yeah. you seeing a response to that? Uh, I don't know that that was a focused uh, push by us. It might have been before I got there, but, but I do see that there are uh, oftentimes people that contact me and say, the Lord's blessed me with an early retirement or my company's changing and so I'm, I'm kind of forced into early retirement and, and I just want to give my time to the Lord. And uh, uh, that's been very encouraging. We have a handful of, of families that are involved in that kind of work and they, a lot of them just will go for maybe five months out of the year to say Peru uh, and work, and then the other, uh, how many would that be, seven months, uh, they're back in the States doing, doing reporting in churches as well as just retirement type stuff, visiting with family and so on. But, but that, that is a very legitimate um, option, um, and uh, we, we love working with people like that. Mm. Yeah. Hear people every now and then say, well, God's called me to be a missionary. What is a call to missions? Yeah, good question. That's why I ask it. That's, that's uh, that's sort of an ever uh, a, a piece of, of, how do I say it? That, that's a, a concept that I'm um, ever wanting to kind of understand and study mm. myself. Mm. Uh, I used to, I've kind of been on both sides just in my own mind of, well, no, there's no specific call. You know, everybody should go to the mission field. <laughs> mm. uh, and, and now I, I guess I'm sensing just a, a, some more wisdom in seeing that, that certain people God touches in a way that, uh, that they are of those that he intends to, to cross borders, to cross barriers, and to, uh, to make disciples in a different place. And I, and I think that that is, is, is definitely not some, some voice that you hear or some, uh, some you know, accidentally, and I'm not, I don't want to criticize the stories of people that, that happened to open their Bible to a certain thing and said, yeah, that one was for me and I need to go. Uh, I think that God uses his people in the church, he uses church leaders like yourself and, and other leaders to, to come into people's life and say, you know, you're gifted, and, and I think God would, would use you on the mission field. He uses those sorts of things. He uses his word to, to grow a burden in somebody's heart for reaching people that way. Uh, and he uses these ways, and, and he then, I think that we ought to, to look for those. This should be a group effort, I believe, and I think God calls through those processes, and we we, we see people where they're growing in their character, they, they're, they uh, have a, a desire, and they also have knowledge of the scriptures where they can, uh, you know, lead people spiritually. Uh, and, and he puts his hand on certain ones. I would look at, you know, Paul as an illustration. That was a different day. He had voices from heaven. I understand that. But he was very particularly called for that kind of ministry. Uh, Philip and, and others uh, that, that God put his hand upon. Uh, and I would say even, you, you know, we don't know Luke's story in the, in the New Testament, but you see people like him, he was a doctor, and yet uh, somehow along the way, uh, I, I have a feeling, I don't know this, but I have a feeling Paul was a pretty persuasive person, uh, but, uh, but somewhere along the line uh, through his growth in, in Christ, it was clear to him that he should join Paul and that he should be a part, and he was a support role. He was writing, you know, he was he was providing, we don't know what other kinds of ways. He, he's a physician, so maybe he was offering help in that way. But, uh, but God clearly burdened him and, and called him to, to do that work. So, Talking about Luke being a physician, I also see that there has been a trend in, in recent years uh, uh, of people getting involved with, I don't know what you'd want to call it, social ministries. And, and there are a lot of, a lot of churches... Uh, that would, uh, you know, put social ministries on the same level of what we would call biblical missions. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'm painting a picture here that uh, I'm making a blurry, I don't know. But to what degree should a biblical missionary called to Romania be involved in um, social ministries on mm -hmm. the field. Yeah. For instance, I, you know, I, I go to a lot of third world countries uh, uh, in the 30 some nations. And when you go out there, there are a lot of organizations that are out there digging ditches for people, teaching people how to fish, teaching people how to raise whatever. Uh, where is the balance there? Yeah, that's a that's a good question, and I I would not want to 
there's just a lot. You know, people write volumes on this type of thing, but so there's a lot to to think through. But I, I I really would say that we can't be we can't necessarily be opposed to to efforts to help people that that are less fortunate. We can't be opposed to the idea of of helping people of helping pick our neighbor up that's that's in a in a hard place. Uh, however. We, we must keep the main thing the main thing. And, and really, it's a matter of what do you believe the mission is? What is the mission that we have been given? Um, and, and I think that we have to see that, th that, the, that the Lord Jesus, because he has a plan for this earth, he's going to return. This earth is not getting better. It's getting worse. That doesn't mean we just assign you know, the people that are getting worse with the world to, to you know, oh, well, you know. But... Uh, we must be about the, the, the spreading of the gospel, the saving of souls, because that's what will last for eternity. And I think that's the heart of the Lord Jesus, to make disciples uh, in all nations. Uh, and so keeping the main thing, the spread of the gospel, the building of the church. Uh, and then, as we, again, talked about this last night, but, but the secondary application of doing gospel ministry is that we are following the, the example of Christ and we're loving our neighbor and we're, uh, we're giving that cup of water and that sort of thing. So we're, we're modeling Christ as we spread the gospel and as we build churches and teaching those churches in Romania, wherever around the world to, to love their neighbor. Uh, and so uh, I, practically speaking, if I was running a church, you know, that, that would be a hard balance. You know, how much of this do we do and how, how much of it? But I think that we have to, to really make sure we're covering the gospel well and our responsibility to give the gospel to people. Um, but that we also do it um, in our own church. Uh, we, have a, we go to a fairly large church that's a little more capable of, of doing big things, but uh, we're doing uh, things to help people, but uh, the gospel is, is unapologetic unapologetically in the forefront of those efforts. And uh, so I think that's a good, a good thing. There is such a thing as giving a cup of cold water in the name of the Lord, isn't there? Right, amen. That, that really is a part of it as well. Uh, we've got four minutes left. Uh, so uh, two things. Number one, if a person senses that God might be leading him in the missions today, in this group we're kind of limited in size today, I can start pointing people out. <laughs> that in, in this group today, or, well, and there's probably many watching us, but if a person senses that, they're, that the Lord would have them in the missions, what should they do now? Yeah. And then just give us a final challenge. Okay. I think they should certainly be praying. They should be consulting with, with you, their pastor. Uh, and they should be... Uh, looking to to get more involved in the work of this church uh, in in uh, beginning to to work out their uh, their calling that they're sensing to to be discipling people in the word of God to be having spiritual conversations with people maybe leading a class or a Bible study so looking for ways to start getting some experience but I would say first of all they would be praying they would be consulting with with dear advisors, godly advisors near them, especially their pastor, uh, and then uh, let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be happy to start uh, to ask them questions and think through other pieces of preparation that would be important. Oftentimes people have obligations that need to be cared for, debts or, or other things that need to be thought through uh, and beginning to make a plan that way. Uh, final challenge, I would just say uh, keep, keep the Keep keeping the main thing the main thing, which I think is, is a, a heartbeat of this church and, and always been challenged to be here and to see the, the reaching out and the emphasis on the gospel. But uh, don't, be, don't be content to let pastor and let others be doing that. Uh, seek ways for you yourself to, uh, to be doing more for the sake of, of the cause of Christ. Uh, and... Uh, whether that means sharpening up your, your Bible study and, and Bible knowledge skills, or whether that means actually using what you know of the Scripture to, uh, to get into people's lives. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take long, even among us, uh, to see the needs that people have spiritually and to be willing and ready to, to try to meet those needs. Amen. Some of you may or may not know, but Travis's grandpa was a charter member of this church. 
founding member of this church. Yeah. And uh, did you, you knew that. Didn't I did, you? yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Some of our people probably don't know that, but that's true. Travis, thank you for being with us. Thank we'll you. be hearing more about from you in the next yes, service. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, as we come to you this morning, we do thank you and praise you for the God that you are and the way that you work in our lives. Thank you for Travis and Becky and their family and what they've been doing in missions over in Romania and now in an advanced way here in the home office. And I pray, dear Lord, that you'd continue to use them for your glory. And Lord, I pray that some of these questions that we've asked and answered today has found lodging in all of our hearts as we go forward from here. Now, Lord, prepare our hearts for the service that will follow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. When will we?